I'd like to call to order the Hatfield Township Board of Commissioners workshop meeting for April 12, 2017. Roll call. President Zipfel. Here. Vice President Hughes. Here. Commissioner Andrus. Here. Commissioner Rogers. Here. Commissioner Thomas. Here. Uh, I would like to ask Commissioner Thomas if she would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. Absolutely. All right, is there a uh, motion to approve tonight's agenda? So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Rogers, second by Vice President Hughes. All in favor of approving tonight's agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we'll move forward with the agenda that is before you and on the screen. First, citizens' comments. Any citizens' comments on agenda items only? All right, not, not, uh, I don't see anyone running up to the podium, so we're going to move on to our uh, consent items. Is there a motion to move into the record the consent items listed in your agenda? So moved. Motion second. by Vice President Hughes, second by Commissioner Thomas. Uh, those consent items include the engineer's report and police report for the month of April, Park and Recreation Board minutes for February 6th and May 13th of this year, the Calmer Fire monthly report for February and March of this year, the HTMA meeting minutes of February 14th of 2017, the North Penn Water Authority meeting minutes of February 28 of 2017 and the HTMA monthly budget report for February 2017. With that, I'll call the question. All in favor of moving those items into the record say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hearing none, those are moved into the record. We have a special presentation tonight, uh, and that is um, by Ann Shearing, and she is going to, and if you want to go up to the podium, if that's okay with you, uh, she is going to describe for us what really is a fantastic initiative. For those of you who have ever driven through Lansdale, it's probably a good example, right? Uh, there, is, um, there are banners that go through Lansdale that identify uh, those who have served. Oh, there they are. Those who have served or are serving. And they are um, affixed to, for example, there, a light post. And we are contemplating having that done here in Hatfield Township. And Ms. Shearing is going to explain that to us. And we are very excited to have you. And we think it's a wonderful project. So uh, with that, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Uh, just to give you a quick uh, how I started this. I was on vacation up in uh, McElhatton and stopping for gas. I saw they have just a small street. There were 25 banners just lined up with the American flag over the top. And it, it just hit me as so patriotic. It, it was really moving. And I thought, Lansdale, I'm from Lansdale, I thought Lansdale needs some patriotism. We only have what I call tuning fork flags that I don't like. So I thought this would be great if I could take it to our borough and you know, convince them to do this to honor our veterans. So I did my homework and um, checked out all the places that had them and uh, got all my information, went before our committee and uh, they said they liked the idea, take it to council. So uh, the following month, I took it to council. Uh, council liked it. Uh, they agreed. And so I went out and did my fundraising and uh, started doing my advertising, which was difficult because the um, veterans cannot give you any information. That's all private. So I went to our uh, VFW and our American Legion, and we put it in our uh, home and our um, Lansdale Historical Society too, plus the paper came out which was a great help. So the word got out and they started coming in and we have um, international festivals and chamber, chamber of Commerce banners up. So I was hoping to cover those 48 posts that they had with banners. I had no idea. And, um, and within about the first two weeks, I hit 48, and then I hit 100, and 200, then 300. And at 413, the borough cut me off because this was unplanned, and our public works department, you know, besides their regular duties, they had a hard time getting these up, so they were really behind. So they did cut me off, but they finally did get them all caught up. And then I went uh, for approval again. Uh, in the spring in January for this year and I asked them to extend me to 500 for a flat limit so they did that so I've hit my 500 and uh, as you can see I gave you a little 
printout of what we did in Lansdale, but I changed her top to Hatfield. So if you read along with that, this is what I have for Lansdale with your name, the Hatfield Township Hometown Heroes Banner Programs, a living tribute can, uh, created for the community to recognize and honor our veterans who are serving or our veterans who have served our country in the United States Armed Forces. To qualify, a veteran, living or deceased, must have had a connection to Hatfield Township, attended local schools, a relative, friend, etc., or at some point in his or her life. Also, those honored on the war memorials and veterans recommended by your local VFW and American Legion posts. So the banners uh, that I have are 24 by 48 heavy vinyl. They're printed on both sides and they'll display the service person's photograph, including their full name, branches of the military, and the era of their service. Banners will be displayed, this is in Lansdale, from May through Veterans Day in November, in observance of all the military armed forces birthdays. And then we remove them and they're stored until the same period in the following year, at which time they'll be re, you know, redisplayed. The banners are really good quality, so I figured they'd go for three years, and that's what our council went along with. So they're up from May uh, you know, through Veterans Day, and then they're stored in a climate control place. So each banner requires the uh, hometown hero form filled out, which is on the second page, and I also put your township on there. And they have to have the uh, photograph in uniform, it must be in uniform, of the hero, and the payment of $100 for each banner, which for Lansdowne, it only comes out to $33 a year to honor a veteran or a loved one, which is a pretty nice thing. And um, so the information is on here, and on the application page, the next page, it helps the person if it's a sponsor, which we have quite a few sponsors because a lot of the older veterans cannot afford it. So um, you know, if we can get donations from the VFW or something to sponsor these people that can't afford it, it's really nice. And uh, that lists all the wars. And so that gives them a, a help. But this is what our banners, look like they're uh, on both sides they're 24 by 48 and somebody suggested we should put their now picture on the side so we know who they are <laughs> <laughs> so, so your uh, husband is shaking his head no <laughs> <laughs> so that that's what that is but um on, on your your cover letter here you can change whatever you'd like. If you don't want them up from May through, you know, Veterans Day, if you want to do something different, that's great. But we take them down in Lansdale then because then we put our holiday banners up. Plus it gives you something different to look at. You're not, you're not seeing that same thing all the time. So my part in this would be that uh, when the applications come to me, you know, with their banner, with their, um, their application, their photo and uniform and their payment, I would take them to my design team. They'll design the banner. Uh, I go back to them and I proof every one of them for every line that's on there. And then they'll have them printed. Then I go back again and I proof them again, bring them home. And if you have families like we do in Lansdale, some families we have fives and sevens, I'll band those families together so that when your public works gets them, they'll be able to hang them together. And then I'll deliver them to your public works department, which I found out on the road out here. Okay, so do you have any questions? I'd like to just jump in, commissioners, if you, if you, uh, if you don't mind. Just a, a few other pieces of information. On, you know, unfortunately, here in Hatfield, it's slightly different than Lansdale Borough. Lansdale is a borough that owns its own utility and therefore owns its own uh, uh, utility pools, which they hang um, these banners up. So one of the challenges that we're going to have but we are working our way through it is that we have to work with the two utility companies that provide service in Hatfield, which is PPNL and Pico. Um, so give, given some of the response that we received from the utilities, we've, we've preliminarily identified this location for some of the banners, which everybody has, has already seen. Um, it's essentially the, the park aquatic center and the municipal parking lot, uh, as well as 40 foot and Welsh Road, which will then lead you into Lansdale and create a nice continuity of the, of the banners. Um, the process here is not going to be as smooth. Um, once we get the program up and running, we 
PPNL is limiting us to 25 uh, telephone poles. So we will identify 25 on that route, and then we will have to have them go out and inspect them to make sure it's, it's, uh, it's safe and it's not going to obstruct any issues on their end. So you know, we're dealing with a lot of different groups here. Um, so we'll do the best we can, um, but it, it, it's going to take some time. But we've already started the process on our end. We'll see what they say. Um, but I, I think tonight was to have Ann come out to promote the program. I know the commissioners here are excited about it, and uh, we can certainly start getting a lot of the, um, the a lot of your information on the website and on the mm -hmm. newsletters, and you can start collecting applications as we work our way through the process of the utility companies. With the uh, utility poles too, Aaron, if they're the big fat poles, you can hang double on them. Okay. You know, you can either hang one above the other or you can do them, them sideways. And okay. so Lansdale, we were able to, that's how I could extend my last 87 to hit 500. I only needed 45 poles because then I could put two on each pole. Okay, that's great. So, yeah, so maybe we'll double be able to do 50 then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, does that also include, that 25 include the two parks? That just down 40 foot in Welsh? It would be all of the outlined area, 25 total without a fee from PPNL. Anything additional, there'd be a fee. So I think at, at this point, we'll start with 25, see how it goes, and then we can have a conversation later if we want to expand beyond that. But we are only allowed at this point in PPNL territory for this program. I, I thought I gave another suggestion that you're right out front here where your township, you have some poles. If you put your KIAs there, the killed in actions, I think that's a, a beautiful spot to have them where people would see them all the time. I didn't think of that when I was doing my project in Lansdale. So this past, before they took them down, my husband and I took a big ladder and went up, punched a hole and put black ribbons through them so that the borough guys know, hang these KIAs in our memorial park. So I think that's a, a special thing. And you said that um, you figured about three years they would last the banners. Yeah. Then what happens after that? Do you purchase new ones and the families have to purchase another one? They can renew with new ones. And um, I'm going to have to take these 500 to my house and give the people a month if they want to pick them up. They can. Otherwise, I don't know what to do with them. But yes, they can renew. I already have the pictures and their applications. They'll just have to send a new you know, payment in it for the three years, if you decide to do yours that long. Pardon? Does anybody want to feel the quality of a pattern? Anyway, we, I don't we, think uh, so. <laughs> I got to tell you something. I'm going to start with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go with her. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Other than uh, we can't thank you enough for doing this. As soon I as am we so heard proud it, as soon as it. we heard it, we thought, of course, this is a, a brilliant idea and what a wonderful way to honor these servicemen and women. Thank so, you. And, and it's great that you've taken on this and you, that you've kept going with it. So we can't thank you enough. I got a, uh, just to say, I got a special award last night from the Lansdale Historical Society. I got the Edwin G. Hull Historic Achievement Award. When I did this, I never thought of it as historical preservation. I just thought of all of our veterans that really don't get enough honor. That's the best type of giving, so thank you. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions. Congratulations on your award. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, the remainder of our meeting is kind of the mundane stuff that we do. It's not nearly as interesting or as exciting. Part of the but isn't mundane. <laughs> well, we'll move on to the uh, committee reports. First is Planning and Zoning Committee, Commissioner Rogers. Yes, the first item is a uh, resolution. Thanks, Review. thanks, Commissioner Rogers. You can't get more mundane than, than these, this item for sure. This is just a housekeeping item, Commissioners. Uh, we know the uh, commercial development that has been approved, the arbors um, attached to the SEPTA station at Comer, and we've done several of these planning modules in the past. This is simply to approve the, uh, this, the to provide sewer to this location and uh, it, the, in, to send the application to DEP. And soon, and we heard Pete Dorney present a month ago about the diversion line that would serve this area. Once that's in, we won't have to go through this planning module process. So we're, we're almost to the end of this. But this is simply a resolution so we can attach it to the uh, application to send the DEP uh, to permit sewer hookup to this commercial development that has been approved prior. All right. And then uh, with that, why don't I uh, take a motion for approval of resolution 17-07. Is there such a motion? So moved. 
Motion by Commissioner Thomas, second by Commissioner Rogers. Uh, any further discussion or comments or questions? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of resolution 17-07 say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that is approved. Item number two is, I'm actually gonna defer this one to uh, the solicitor. Kristen's gonna explain what's happening here. Um, many years ago when Wyndham Woods was developed, the sewer lines were dedicated to the township by mistake. The Hatfield Township Municipal Authority realizes through their paperwork, they came across this and realized that the sewer lines are in the township's name and we don't want that. We don't like to own sewer lines. They need to own them. So this is just a cleanup item. You'll see in two weeks where we'll transfer the lines to the authority. Bob, anything else? That's it. Thank you. Okay, we're going to work, move on to Public Works Committee, Vice President Hughes. All right, I'm going to go out of order here a little bit, that's all right. Um, the Walnut Street Bridge payment, the third payment's due, and I guess we're going to vote on that in two weeks, right, Aaron? Yes, sir. Okay, and then I guess Aaron's going to show us now the overview for the road program that will be resurfacing this year, and the handicap ramps we'll be doing. So. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Hughes. And I would say a sign of spring is the, the Masters Golf Tournament and Hatfield Township paving out or bidding out the uh, roads to be paved. So here's another sign of spring and another good sign, another in indication of how many in roads and how much infrastructure is being improved in Hatfield is that for the fourth straight year, we are on two slides for the roads that will be paved in, in Hatfield Township, which is always a good sign. Um, what I'm going to do is I think a lot of people are, are visual learners, um, so we're just going to do a little overview on where these roads are in Hatfield Township and then take a step back and look at uh, over the years which roads have been paved. So these commissioners are, and this was discussed at a public works committee meeting um, a few weeks ago, these are going to be the roads that are currently out to bid for the 2017 road program, as well as all the associated, uh, the, the ADA accessible ramps. The commissioners will be in a position in two weeks from tonight to consider awarding the bids. Uh, the commissioners here in Hatfield have invested over $700,000 in the paving roads and upgrading ramps over the last several years, and this is another year um, that we, we will be doing that. Um, just a, a walk through time, 2016, just to refresh everybody's memory and, and ignore the, the red is the, the municipal border um, besides the red development in this one. We didn't, we didn't pave a, a, a giant square. Um, so those are the roads we did in 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, which is the color that you can't see. But what I wanted to show here was, so for the past eight years, you can see that a lot of roads have been paved in Hatfield Township and it's been a priority of the commissioners and it's abundantly clear when you look at a diagram like this. And I think even the next slide illustrates it even better because a lot of the roads in Hatfield happen to be state roads or county roads, which are two types of roads that the township will never pave. So when you include those in there, you see that uh, a very good portion of the township is covered and has been paid in the last uh, several years. So I know it was a commitment from the board years ago to pave every road within a certain period of time, and we're well on our way to achieving that. So commissioners, that list has been bid. We will open that bids, uh, the bids next week. I will present those, the outcome to the commissioners at the regular meeting to be uh, awarded or considered to be awarded. Now, also included in that is the handicap ramps. That's Correct. a separate bid, but in right. all those streets, there will be handicap ramps done. Every so. ramp that's affected yeah. will be replaced. And that's that's a considerable cost. So. Significant. That's all I have under public works. <clears throat> Great. All right, next is Parks and Recreation Committee, Commissioner Thomas. Thank you, President Zipfel. Uh, Parks and Recreation Report, we have Five and Dime coming up on Sunday, April 23rd. It's our eighth annual Five and Dime. Uh, you can register now for the five or 10 miler at runtheday.com. Features include a flat course on-site parking, a tech or cotton shirt, music and more. If anyone is interested in volunteering on race day, you can contact Ashley O'Neill at aoneill at hatfieldtownship.org. Little Athletes, Hatfield's partnering with Montgomery United Soccer to bring your little ones an educational and fun learning experience. Little Athletes is a preschool program that introduces the little ones to team sports, social interaction, and enhances fine and gross motor school skills. You can register for one of, two session, one of our two sessions, 
They're on Tuesdays from 6 to 7 from uh, April 18th through May 23rd at School Road Park, or Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, from April 20th through May 25th at School Road Park. Registration is $65 per child and includes an hour instruction for six weeks, a t-shirt, and a goodie bag full of fun. And to register for that, you can go to www.hatfieldrec.com. We also have our Spring Fling Plant Exchange and Community Yard Sale. Join us Saturday, May 20th for a kickoff into the spring season, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Hatfield Aquatic Center. Our Shade Tree Commission and Environmental Advisory Council will be out to offer advice tips and information as you start your gardening and select your plants. Bring any potted seedlings or any other plants you would like to swap or share. If you're looking to do some spring cleaning, this is the perfect opportunity. For $10 per table, you can sell your treasures or shop around. To register for that, you can go to www.hatfieldrec.com. And the Hatfield Aquatic Center season passes are uh, continuing. You can are still available for purchase, so you can take advantage of the new software and register online. Visit the Township website for a full listing of available season passes and fees. And the second discount of roughly 5% is now available through May 15th at 12 p.m. And then look for more information on swim lessons coming later in April. We have teddy bear picnics. Our popular teddy bear picnics are back. Preschoolers in their garden Guardians can enjoy time in the heated fun pool, snacks, crafts, and more at the Hatfield Aquatic Center. Remember to pack a brown bag lunch and a teddy bear. 2,000 teddy bear picnics will run from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Wednesday, May 17th, Wednesday, May 24th, Wednesday, May 31st. The cost is $5 per child, and again, you can register at hatfieldrec.com. Our summer rec camp registration is now open as well. Camp runs for nine weeks through June, July, and August. Registration is available on a weekly basis. There are several available discounts as well. The camp calendar and handbook are currently available on the township website. So please visit hatfieldtownship.org for more information. And last but certainly not least, get fit aqua exercise. If you're looking for a cool way to exercise this summer, then this is the program for you. Fun-filled class allows you to work out with music and exercise tools at your own pace. The classes are held in the shallow and deep water sections of the pool with support from an instructor. You can purchase a card for the number of classes you would like to attend. A 10 class pass is $40. A 20 class pass, say that 10 times fast, <laughs> is $60. And a 30 class pass is $75. They're offered from June 12th through August 26th, Mondays at 7 p.m., Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. And again, that's at the Hatfield Aquatic Center. And visit hatfieldrec.com to register for that. And then the other piece that I had for Parks and Rec is Frick's, tra Frick's Chestnut Street Trail Bid. And I'm going to defer that to Aaron. Thomas. I just have an update for the commissioners and the public on where we are with this project um, as, as, far as, uh, as well as some new details. Um, as, as the commissioners know, as many of you may recall, uh, roughly a year ago, Montgomery County uh, implemented a new grant program. They called it the Monco 2040. It was for, uh, it was for several reasons, creating more walkable communities, uh, parks and rec initiatives. Hatfield Township was fortunate enough to be one of the first uh, uh, grant winners, winners um, for this new program, and the township received $100,000 to help improve Frick's Trail, which for this specific grant uh, includes three components, which I'm gonna provide a little overview here just as a reminder and provide a little more information. So one of the components is the pedestrian crossing at Orvilla um, and Independence to get a someone over Orvilla and into what will be part two of the Fricks Trail, which has yet to be built. Obviously, we are still working our way through uh, the approvals at the DEP level, um, but we figured we're gonna start moving and chipping away at items that we can do now as we go through the application process. So what we're doing now, one of the requirements for this county grant is that all the work must be publicly bid out and uh, you, have to, you bring a third party in to perform the work. So 
what we're doing is these three items that I'm going to talk about tonight are being bid after we discuss it tonight and then I'm not sure if it's going to be ready in the next two weeks to be awarded by the board or the, um, the month after. But just these three components will be bid. So it will be the pedestrian crossing at our villa, which will look something like this. Um, this is in a different community. The flashers, you know, one of the issues we, we, that came up when we had town hall meetings was safety. And obviously safety is our number one concern. So it will look something like that on our villa. This will be the route that we've discussed. And obviously sev several components of this have already been built up to roughly right around here. And then this connects to the sidewalks. This is where the crossing will be. The new trail will take you through the, uh, the Keystone property up to Sterling and then back through the township property into our park, which will connect to the current Chestnut Street Trail. Uh, so the next component is striping on North Penn Road. As a lot of people here know that, that frequently walk this route, uh, it's, a, it's a very wide road, it's a very safe route, uh, but it isn't at this point delineated for walkers or bikers. So uh, one component of this grant will be to create location of this where you walk out. It will create something like this on North Penn Road which is essentially a, you know, a share the road type feature, which will just make it even more safer than it currently is. Third component to this project at this point. Also, for those of you who walk this, this trail often, I know several of the residents here do, as you walk beyond the aquatic center through the woods and you come out on Maple right now, as it currently is, you, there, there is no sidewalk and you, you walk right into the... <laughs> Street that was not me. The street. <laughs> Solicitor's not happy about this project. <laughs> there are legal issues. <laughs> I'll sleep, sorry. <laughs> I'll make it more exciting. I think that's an objection there. I'm not sure what that <laughs> yeah, is. She doesn't like sidewalks, apparently. So as you, currently when you walk out, and that's the trail, you walk into this situation, uh, and it becomes, it's, it's, I wouldn't call it unsafe, it's not ideal, and we're going to make it ideal. Um, so the sidewalks will connect. And not as, there will be a crossing, but not as, um, it won't be a similar crossing as our villa because the volume is significantly less. So part of this project, these, these guide rails will be moved back. Sidewalks will come in and you won't have to do what I do, the tiptoe along the curb and fall in the Maple Avenue while everyone's watching, which I've done a few times. But just to outline in the red where exactly the sidewalk will take place. So. The three pieces, we're going to bid them out together. We're going to bid the pedestrian crossing, the striping, and the sidewalks and see what kind of numbers we get. Again, $100,000 from Montgomery County. Uh, there'll be a match from the township, but we, we, we're investing a lot into this trail, and uh, the, the match will not be an issue. So I'll have more information as the bid results come back in. This is being guided by our, our traffic consultant at McMahon, who's, who's walking us through the bid requirements. So more information, but a, a project that is very, has been very visible, discussed at length many times. People are excited to see some progress. We, we need to show some progress. And that match isn't coming from tax dollars, right? That's coming from uh, other... Right. I'm glad you mentioned that, yeah. Commissioner Hughes. This entire project is, is there, there is no, zero tax dollars funding this entire project. You know, we don't have a total cost of it yet, but um, through grants, through contributions from one of the township's financing authorities, which is totally... Um, comprised of, of uh, private dollars, um, as well as some other contributions over the past few years, there will, there will not be a penny of, of taxpayer money spent on this entire project. Uh, Aaron, one of the things that we talk about is the signage and the lighting for vehicles as they were to go down a, a main road. But one of the things I, I know that we're, I wanna keep in mind for all of us, and also as you're going through this with the staff, is signage for the pedestrians so that they understand that I, I think there needs to be extra little extra signage there so they understand that they're crossing and that it's a it's a dangerous condition um it, i really i really want to make sure that uh, we don't look back five years from now and god forbid somebody is injured and it's not just because a vehicle is slowing down because of light but it's also because people assume that they can just walk right out into traffic and that other people are going to recognize that right away Unfortunately, I see that in, in um, smaller towns and even cities regularly. And the thing I'm concerned about is people walking with their phones. As they walk with their phone, they think, okay, this is a pedestrian walkway. Everyone's, no one's gonna, everyone's gonna be mindful of the fact that I can cross here. And the truth is that's unfortunately just not true. Excellent points. All of those will be considered. Um, 
All right, Commissioner Thomas, anything else under Parks and Rec? Um, I will say that uh, this weekend uh, there were two, there was an organization that came and helped open our pool this weekend uh, in the process of opening the pool. Um, Cal Sports showed up for, with 45 volunteers on Saturday and about 40 or 45, an additional 40 or 5 volunteers on Sunday to assist um, opening up the pool and it was for four hours each day. And they, they worked, uh, it was kids and parents and uh, they worked. There was a lot that got done. So um, I want to uh, give them some recognition for that. Um, and I saw the work that they did and it was, uh, some of it involved some, some serious lifting and parental involvement. So that was great to see one of our organizations get involved. So thanks to them. I think that they have photos that they want to share with. All right, we're gonna move on to public safety. Uh, we have one item under that chief. Um, I know that your group is gonna, your folks are gonna handle this. This is our drug take back day which is April 28th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Township Building Lobby. For those of you who are unfamiliar, this is a, an annual, uh, is it annual or is it biannual? I annual. It seems, it seems like this <laughs> was only a few annual. months ago that we it's had, at least, it's at least annual. annual. It seems to come up it, pretty often. Yeah, it seems like it pops up uh, uh, very often. It's very successful, so I think it, they just keep uh, rolling with as many times as they could possibly do it. And so what it is, it gives um, residents the opportunity, no questions asked, to, sh to show up with um, prescription medication that is in their home that they want to get rid of. For two reasons you want to do this. One is you don't want kids or anyone else who should not be taking this medication to, to have access to it so you can get it out of your house. And second is you don't want to throw it in a trash or down the toilet or down the sink or something where it could unfortunately have environmental ramifications. So. Um, we have had, there's not, there's not just a few people who take advantage of this. Sometimes we get pounds and pounds of medication. 451 right? pounds last year, and it goes up. 300 pounds of prescription medication on an annual basis that people bring What's in. What's so, so funny over there? They're laughing about why do you keep all that to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> He's the chief. He knows everything. Apparently she woke up. Locked my, yeah. my, my yeah. off to keep yeah. away from people no, like you. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Chief, for, uh, for organizing this and running it so effectively each year. So again, folks, that's April 29th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. No questions asked. All you need to show up and drop it off in the lobby, and then the police take it from there. All right, we're going to move on to the Finance Committee. Commissioner Andrus. Yes, just an update on um, where we are financially. Comparing 2017 20, uh, financials to 2016 for first quarter. Uh, 2017 were 3.8 million uh, increase or tax revenue compared to 3.4 million last year. So roughly uh, $400,000 ahead. And the reasons for that are that we have a $90,000 increase in real estate taxes collected from uh, new homes and early payments, $200,000 in real estate uh, settlements with large non-residential properties. We've we've made motions in, uh, recently where we've accepted settlements from um, tax uh, um, disputes. Then another 111,000 received in transfer taxes, which must mean the housing market is doing very well, which is a good thing. And from an expense side, uh, 2017 snow removal, there was $32,000 worth of material uh, thrown out on a salt on the roads uh, uh, this year compared to $42,000 uh, last uh, winter. Dollar reduction. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much. Uh, township staff reports. Aaron. I have nothing tonight, uh, commissioners, but our solicitor has a good update for the group. Yes, I'd like to add to that revenue for the township. The school district has produced another settlement, just like Commissioner Andrus was describing. This is for the Snyder Square Shopping Center. It actually is comprised of two parcels. That's where the, the giant is, the CVS, the bank, the tire place, the gas. <clears throat> they have settled for an appeal that began in 2011 uh, for a lump sum from 11 to, through uh, 16 in the amount of, for the township, $146,611. So we're going to get that in one lump sum. And then the increase yearly thereafter will be in excess of 30000 a year. So this is another good one. And uh, we thank the school district for, as usual, taking the laboring oar. Um, I need the board to ratify the execution of this settlement so that we can get our money. <laughs> it's never a problem. 
I think we have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Rogers <laughs> as to uh, <laughs> approval to execute the settlement agreement. Second from Vice President Hughes. Uh, might be a land speed record on voting on this one. <laughs> uh, all in favor, unless there's any questions or comments. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hearing none, that motion is approved and it can be ratified. All right, anything else, Kristen? No, nothing else. Okay, citizens comments. Uh, any citizens comments? Um, I should note that we are, the board is gonna meet in executive session to discuss uh, personnel uh, and negotiate, and yeah, personnel um, after the meeting. So uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. Motion by Vice President <laughs> Hughes, second by Commissioner Rogers. All in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thanks, everyone.